Hello, welcome. October is National Fire Prevention Safety Month. Usually, hundreds of fire departments across this state and across our country open our doors to let the public in to see what fire departments do and to teach fire safety. We all know due to the bad cough, we're not able to do that this year. So today, we're trying something different. We're actually bringing the firehouse to you. We're gonna do a virtual tour of our firehouse. Along our tour, we're gonna have some guests with us today. So look who's pulling up. You're missing seeing all the young kids uh, on the tours, but uh, Sparky's coming today along with Fireman Fred. Come on in, guys. All right, so we have Sparky and Fireman Fred, and we're going to go on a tour of our firehouse. Come on in. Firefighters need a lot of gear and equipment that they use when they go into a burning building. Today with us, we have one of our newest firefighters, Firefighter Tyler. And Firefighter Tyler is going to get in full protective envelope gear. He's gonna get in all his gear in about two minutes. Okay, that's how quick firefighters have to be. We have to be ready and willing to go at a moment's notice. So firefighter tire, when we say go, he's gonna put all his gear on from how he is now to breathing with a SCBA on. Okay, so firefighter Tyler, are you ready? I'm ready. Our timekeeper, are you ready? So firefighter Nick is gonna shout out every 15 seconds uh, so we know how fast Tyler can do this, and I'll let you know what Tyler's doing. Tyler, are you ready? I am ready. Timekeeper, are you ready? Ready. Sparky, are you ready? Fireman Fred? Woo! Let's go. When you say go, when Nick says go, Tyler will start. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Looks like ty Firefighter Tyler's putting on something we call bunker pants. Either the boots, pants, the suspenders. And if you notice something wrong his waist, we have something called a bailout system that helps us uh, in case of emergency. Now he's putting on a Nomex hood to protect his ears 15 seconds, and he's going to zip up his coat. All of his gear is rated for over hundreds of degrees in heat. Uh, he needs to protect all parts of his skin, ears, hood, neck, hands, thumbs. 30 seconds. Okay. Now he's putting on his face piece. His face piece will allow him to breathe in a condition where there's lots of smoke and lots of heat. Now he's going to the SCBA. This is called a self-contained breathing apparatus. He just turned it on. Okay, he did the over-the-head method. It's like a book bag that you wear at school, children. Okay, so he's tightened up his strap. He's got his face piece on. Okay. He's tightened everything up. Make sure it's comfortable for him. One minute. One minute in. Now he needs a helmet in case something Fall down, fall down, he needs to protect his head. Okay, uh, he's gonna put his Nomax hood on to protect all his skin. He wants no skin showing because when we go Minute into a burning, burning building, it may be over a thousand degrees. So we need protection. He's got his gloves on, he's got his face piece, timekeeper. What's he at? Minute 24. Minute 24, way to go, Tyler. Let's stop for Tyler. Sparky, Fire Fred. Nice shot, Tyler. So now, Tyler needs some gear. You can say that here, Tyler. Okay? He's going to need a radio. Okay, he's going to put this in his pocket. With a radio, he's able to talk to the fire chief and to other firefighters. Okay? He's going to need a flashlight. Okay? This will help Tyler see in a burning building. He may need some tools. Okay? And this is where the weight starts coming in. Uh, right now, Tyler probably has about 80 pounds of gear on. Okay, now here's his tool. Okay? And whenever Tyler or any firefighter go into a burning building, they have a partner with them. So their, Tyler's partner may use something called a thermal imaging camera. This allows firefighters to pick up heat in a burning building. So if Tyler wants to go into a burning building, it's very hot and it's very smoky. So for him to see better, he's gonna to go to his hands and knees, okay? And he may crawl around, okay? He may crawl around searching for maybe a victim or to make sure everything's safe, okay? You can stop right there, Tyler. So children, if you ever hear 
a firefighter with a face piece on, breathing like he's breathing, he's here to help you. Okay, please don't run away. He may be shouting, is anybody in here? And if he hears a cry or a yell for help, he'll come get rescue you. Okay, so this is what a firefighter looks like. Don't be scared, he's here to help you. Nice job, Tyler. Okay, uh, here we are at our saw compartment. We may use a lot of saws to cut roofs. What we want to do is get the heat and smoke out, and that's what, uh, one way we can do that, is by cutting a hole in the roof. Here we have fans. This is all part of our ventilation. Here we have our hand tools. So if we need to break something or to force a door, we're able to do that. Come on, Smarty. Uh, we also have hose lines that we can use. Uh, this is a ladder that we use to get to something we call a turntable, and that operates the aerial ladder just like your toys at home. And back here is where the firemen ride. Okay, so they have their uh, SCBA that Tyler just had on, they have other hand tools that they use. And back there, all the firefighters get ready, and everybody learns their orders of what's going to happen on the call. Okay, here's another fire truck we have. This is called an engine company. An engine company's main job is to bring water to the fire. Uh, so again, Fireman Fred, he's ready for a call. He's sitting uh, where the firemen travel. And here we have Firefighter Stephanie. She has one of our hose lines. But the hose line that he, she has is a hose line that we would bring into a burning building. Uh, as you can see, the nozzle she has is a lot bigger than your garden hose at home. Uh, we can put out a lot of water with these hose lines. So we'll keep going. Uh, you can see uh, more equipment that we carry. Mark, are you still with me? We have our hand tools. Again, we have more fans and extinguishers. But back here, folks, when you see the hydrants on your street, and in the winter time, when we ask you to shovel out your hydrant, this is why. This is called a hydrant valve. And what we do is we need to connect our hose to that hydrant so that we have unlimited water. We do carry some water on this engine company, but we need more water. So this uh, hydrant valve and our large diameter hose will help us connect the pumper to a hydrant. So please, in the winter time, shovel out those hydrants so we can get water. We also carry more ground ladders on the engine company. And Firefighter Tyler's back. And this is a hearse tool that we used for car accidents, and Firefighter Tyler is going to demonstrate. Back to Firefighter Tyler. Firefighter Tyler has one of our combination tools, and this is what we use at car accidents. So this is, you may have heard of the jaws of life. Uh, this is able to spread the car apart, and if we go the other direction, we're able to cut metal. Okay? Firefighter Tyler, thank you. Here's our medical compartment. Okay, if someone needs medical attention, we have that capability, and we have more hand tools here. And lastly, folks, this is our fire police vehicle. If we ever need to shut a road down, uh, we can't have traffic going down if, if we're working at a scene, so we have cones and other signs to shut the road down. Okay, are you ready to see more of our station? Come on, Sparky, come on. Here we are in our radio room. This is where we get a lot of our communication. Uh, messages from the dispatch center or uh, other departments come to this room. Uh, so we have our communications, our radio, our logbook. Here we have a very important screen, and this is our I'm responding board. So if a member is responding, we know that they're coming, and uh, we can get our crew assembled and we're ready to go. Uh, that we have, and a map of our district. If we ever need to know where the call is or the location, we can refer to our map. Moving along through our station, Sparky and Fireman Fred, are you still here? Yep. Yeah. Okay, you can see more of our uh, station. Again, we have our trophy cases. This is some of the, our uh, achievements as a department and how we show our uh, tradition and pride. Sometimes if we go to a parade or a competition, they may reward us with a trophy. And we have more plaques here with our inspections and other uh, contests that we participate in. This is our hall. Sparky and Fireman Fred, do you guys go to school? Yeah. Okay, firefighters also have to go to school, and you can see how we social distance our classroom. This Our classroom may be similar to your classroom at school. We have our TV that the instructor puts notes and information on. We have our dry erase board. We have our podium. So firefighters need a lot of training. So we have to do that uh, every month 
to, to stay up on our skills. Come on, Sparky Environment Fred, I want some firefighter safety. Okay? Since it is Fire Prevention Week and Fire Safety, there's some key information that we want to share with you. Okay, Fireman Fred, in case of emergency, what number do we call? 911. 911, very good, Fireman Fred. So if we need the police, if someone's not feeling good, uh, if we need medical attention for an ambulance, or if there's something going on your, with your house with smoke or fire, we call 911, very important. Now some fire safety tips. Fireman Fred, what is this? A smoke detector. Smoke detector, okay? Every floor of your home should have one. These are very, very important. We cannot stress enough how important these are. We have been to several fires where the smoke detector has woken up the family and everyone has safely exited the home. So the smoke detector will sound off. Please, when you hear this alarm, get everyone out of the home and into a safe spot, then call 911. Just like you practice fire drills at school, your family may want to have a fire drill at home some night. Where's your meeting spot? Who's responsible for young children? Okay, so please practice fire drills at home. Change the batteries in these uh, October and in the springtime so that your house is fire safe, okay? We cannot stress enough the importance of a fire alarm. And also you may see a carbon monoxide detector. That should also be on every floor as well. Carbon monoxide, we may not see it, we may not smell it, or we may not taste it. So the detector is the best way uh, for us to detect carbon monoxide because that also could be very harmful. So again, smoke and carbon monoxide alarms save lives. Fireman Fred, what do we have here? Um, matches and a lighter. And what do we do with them if we come across them? Don't touch them. Exactly. These are not toys, okay? We need to tell an adult, please, young children, do not play with lighters or matches. We have seen incidences where young children have and it has turned very bad. So please, if you see matches or a lighter, bring them to an adult and give the attention to an adult. Okay, Sparky and Fireman Fred, many fires in residential homes are caused by cooking. So we want to go over fire safety in the kitchen. You guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we have our fire department cook here, Sarah, and we're going to go over some fire safety tips while cooking. Now, number one, we cannot leave the stove. We cannot leave the kitchen to go watch TV or to take a nap. We have to give attention to what we're cooking. Notice Sarah has her handles turned in so no one uh, bumps into them. We want to make sure young children are not around so they do not get burned by boiling water or something. And if there's a fire, uh, a grease fire in the pan, uh, Sarah's going to cover it, and then we'll go outside and call 911. Okay, here we are towards the end of our tour. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to uh, touring our station and learning some fire safety tips. Again, folks, remember those fire safety tips can save lives. So I'd like to present Sparky and Firefighter Fred with a certificate of accomplishment. Uh, nice job. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Now, uh, if you're interested in joining our ranks, we are a volunteer department. We always are looking for new recruits. Firefighter Tyler, who you saw before, just completed the recent New York State Interior Firefighting course. Uh, Firefighter Tyler, how was that course? It's a great course. It was very intense, very inclusive, but we learned all different aspects of firefighting from search and rescue, putting out fires, ventilation, and putting up ladders. Okay, and he's here for the community. As we say, sometimes we help those in their biggest time of need. So come on out if you're interested. Uh, you can look us up on Facebook or stop by any Thursday night and many other volunteer fire departments in the town of county uh, on websites. You can certainly join. Okay, now wait a minute. I think we're getting a call. Sparky, we have a water call. Jump in the truck. The rest of our crew, our operator Chris, firefighter Tyler, and firefighter Nick are mounting up to respond on a call.